I'm Patrick Garvin, and this is my 1989 FXR. I've actually owned this bike for just about 10 years, and like a lot of folks, man, I just thought FXRs were cool, and I wanted one. I had a chance to pick this up from a gentleman in Indiana. I'm pretty sure it was a one owner bike, and it was basically bone stock. It had some slip-ons on it. He made a modification to the sissy bar pad for his wife. Other than that, it was pretty well stock. And I fought most of my urges to just rip the thing apart right away. And I just rode it. I just rode it and rode it until finally that 80 inch power plant just got so tired, it gave up the ghost. I was lucky enough at the time to come across this engine right here, which is really a special piece, and they don't make them anymore. It's an SNS Cycle Twin Cam 124. It's a T124, but they uh, call it the Twivo. It's a twin cam with Evo mounts, meaning you can just bolt it right in to an Evo. Well, like a lot of projects with a lot of people, I had torn the bike down, pulled the old engine out, and it just sat, and it sat for years. Now, like most things, I can't leave things alone. Even this brand new engine, which makes a ton of horsepower from SNS, I took it apart, powder coated all the chrome stuff black, because I knew I just didn't want chrome, and I really liked that black on the blonde engine. While I was in there, I also threw a little more aggressive roller rocker arms in it. They make a 1.7 ratio roller rocker arm, kind of cheat that cam, because you know, a 124 is not enough horsepower. It was set up for fuel injection, but the FXR has that motor mount that hangs way down in the middle, so it interfered with that throttle body. I ended up having to get rid of the fuel injection, which wasn't a huge deal. And because my plan with this bike was, I just wanted this to be my road dog. I wanted to hop on it, I wanted to take trips. Part of the build to me was keeping things simple. Things definitely get weird, but a carburetor is something I can fix on the road. But I got SNS manifold adapted to fit a Makuni uh, HSR 45. Probably could have gone a little bit bigger on the carb, but I love the look of the classic teardrop. So I made some adapters so it would all work together. And then exiting, Bassani stainless steel pipe. Use these in other bikes and love them. This is a crank style ignition. Since it's a twin cam, obviously it's not a nose cone, so I had to wire up a wiring harness to work with an early twin cam style ignition. I love the twin tech stuff because it's so adjustable and I knew I wanted to be able to control timing as much as I could. Couldn't just have this thing on that old taper shaft transmission. I wouldn't make out of the parking lot with a 124 for it shelled that thing. So if you're gonna get a transmission for your Harley, there's really only one choice in my book, and that's Baker. American made company, just absolutely top shelf bulletproof products. And that's what we did. We put a Baker overdrive six speed in here. Change the shift pattern. I have neutral at the bottom and all the gears are up. Just wanna be able to find neutral real quick because the way I kind of put my start stop switches, which we'll get to. We had that powertrain set up and I knew I wanted to do something a little different on the primary side here. So I did go with an enclosed belt drive from BDL, but I cut the primary cover up. I was kind of channeling one of my favorite builders, Jeff Wright, Church of Choppers. So I seen some of his stuff like that. So I drilled a bunch of holes in my cover just to vent that belt drive there. And then going out the back had to be a chain. I wanted to be control over my gearing. I wanted it to be strong. Again, if I break a belt somewhere on the road, I don't want to deal with it. You gotta have suspension and brakes. I mean, especially on an FXR. They do handle really well for Harleys. So in the front, I kept my stock tubes. This was originally an FXRS SP out there for all the FXR dorks like myself. Basically what that means, it has the same tubes as like an FXRT, they're two over, they're plus two from stock. On earlier than 2000 stuff, you can't get really good brakes for. So I kept my stock plus two tubes, put a set of 2000 lowers on it and dropped all Racetech internals in there. And that made it so I could bolt those nice PM brakes to it and those Galfer rotors. Out back, another PM brake. And the suspension, you'll see, gets a little weird. That's the theme here is like, things, things get weird with this bike. With the FXRS SP, it was a sport convertible. It had these removable leather bags. The distress bags just really worked with everything. But because it has that bag, it meant I couldn't run a standard reservoir style shock, but I could run this bagger style reservoir shock. So I reached out to the folks over at Legends. They're uh, again, local to where I am in Sturgis. And they made me this Revo Arc 
bagger style shock, but sprung for an FXR. So I was able to run the hot rod style shock and still keep my bags. And I thought it looked really cool mounted up here. Kind of looks like some little rocket boosters there. I love that you can see it. Still have access to all my adjustability. So the thing, it gets around corners really, really well. Metzler Cruise Tech's my tire of choice. And I left stock wheels on it. I could have went and got some wild billet wheel, but it just wouldn't have worked with this bike. I love just the gray stock mag. I did convert those over to sealed bearings. Other than that, on some bone stock wheels. Got my brakes, my suspension set up, moving on up to hand controls. I was like, you know what? Let's throw a little flash at this thing. A few gold accents here and there. And that's where the PM radio mount stuff really worked out. My go-to is a built wall tracker bar, which I have on here with some built wall grips. Bare knuckle Paul riser here, that flex riser system where you can flip it around and put pull back in if you want. This thing is an absolute unit, man. Love those risers on there. Works well with my bars. I keep thinking these Nest mirrors are too nice for this bike, but I really like the way they look. PM throttle housing up here and nothing else on the bars. I don't have any switches up here. For a Speedo, I'm just gonna use my phone with a GPS. I normally do that anyway. I have my phone on a quad lock so it can just be my Speedo. Again, simplicity. Didn't want to mess with anything I didn't need. So no buttons up here. So how do you stop and start it? I still keep my key down here. I have my stock FXR key from 1989. And I took apart some switches and put two buttons in here. This one starts it, this one stops it. That's it. The one to keep it as clean and as simple as possible. I did go with a hydraulic clutch. I like that. It allowed me to do some cleaner stuff. And I had over the years scooped up this PM cover, this hydraulic cover. It looks really cool on top of the Baker transmission. As far as the overall thing I was chasing, other than like just rideability, was I wanted it to be different. So easy to build a club style bike out of a Dyna or an FXR. I really didn't want to do that. But the thing is, club style bikes inherently kind of work best and feel best. So I kind of ended up with a little bit of that, but I didn't want to go total club style. So I really like the look of Resto Mod. Resto Mod hot rods, like trucks and cars that look that old, like old patina on the outside and have all of the good hot rod parts underneath. And that's what we did with this. My buddy Danny Hendricks out of Sheridan gave me this faux Tina paint job. The thing already had some natural like dings and dents in it. I said, don't fix anything. I wanna keep my old broken windshield, keep all the flaws in the sheet metal, just give me that patina paint job. And it really worked with this bike. So all the aluminum and chrome stuff, I just started like matte finishing for the most part with Scotch Bite pads, just to kind of dull it up. I don't care if I drop my keys on it or a socket on it or something like that. I do still have my stock pegs on the front, which I really like the way they look on this bike. But for the back here, my wife does love riding on this bike. I have a set of built wall Punisher pegs on there. It's a nice platform peg. I love the pair of seats. I've been in business for 40 years, make cool stuff. I got kind of just this tuck and roll hot rod pattern. I still have the hinge on my seat. They have the screws in the seat. So you undo this back here. This just unhinges and opens up. Hogwarts LED in the front have custom dynamics LED in the back. But I don't have any turn signals on here, like I said. Bare Knuckle Choppers, Bare Knuckle Paul in St. Louis. Man, he makes some of the most badass usable stuff. Stainless steel axle from him. I have his ARP shock bolts on here. Stainless steel swing arm pivot. I have his axle adjusters. Just a bunch of functional stuff all over this bike from Bare Knuckle. A couple of cool gold alloy art pieces on here just to kind of keep that gold thing going through there. Oh, I have one more switch. My only other switch is a high-low switch right over here. Put this big O unnecessary switch on it for the high-low beam on my headlight. Other than that, it's just all keys in a seat, only the stuff you need, ready to rock and roll. I did have that really dope alloy art billet motor mount down front. I didn't want to cover it up, so I moved my regulator. In the stock position, normally it sits out front. I moved it under the frame here, uh, which is great. And the other nice thing I really love about this bike, all these companies you hear me mentioning, it's all made in the USA stuff. This bike is as American made as I could possibly get it. And I know these companies make super legit stuff. This is the first time I think I've ever built my own bike for a JMP project. And I just couldn't be happier with the way it turned out. Can't wait to smash some miles on this thing. If you like what we did here, check out our other custom motorcycles we've built over at jmpcycles.com slash custom motorcycles. Now, 
go work on your own motorcycle. 